Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. I'm Dr. Joey Fawcett. Who gets most of your attention at work, positive people or your vampires? I'm asking because you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Discover how to attract your Faith Positive Dream Team at work. Invite me to speak at your next gathering and you receive the five key off-the-resume qualities of your Faith Positive Dream Team. Email info at getpositive.today to reserve the date and time of your next event. That's info at getpositive.today. Faith Positive Nation, do you ever find yourself saying, here's something I want to do, and you think you're going to do it, but you don't quite get it done? Like, do you ever find yourself saying, I'm going to read my Bible every morning? And then you get up in the morning and suddenly you find yourself sitting at your desk or you're, you're on the line and you go, I didn't read my Bible this morning. wonder what happened. So there's this disconnect between what you say you want to do and what you actually do. The Apostle Paul put it like this. The harder I try to do what's right, the more I do what's what? Wrong. <laughs> well, today we're going to fix that for you. You're going to have an amazing opportunity to learn from one of the foremost authorities on neuroscience, biblical scripture and real life application stories for making this work. And we are so excited to have her on Faith Positive Radio today. So Faith Positive Nation, help me welcome to Faith Positive Radio, Denise Walsh. Denise, thanks so much for your time and your wisdom today. I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm really excited to be here with you today. Yes, yes. So you're from Michigan. Yeah. Michigan shaped like a hand and you you grew up over here, but now you live over here. If, <laughs> if you know anybody from Michigan, you know, this is what they always do. You were very proud of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you are. See, I'm from North Carolina. So what I do is I take my shoe off because North Carolina is shaped like a foot, you know, and I show you where I live. But anyway, uh, you have been around some amazing people and have affected so many people's lives in amazing ways. Over a million people have learned with you. Mm-hmm godly principles and uh, the best of what we refer to as neuroscience today. And you're a clinical psychologist by trade. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what do you do every day for work? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, a bit of my story is that I did. I got into clinical psychology because I truly felt like that was where I would best serve the world. Throughout Mm -hmm. my college years, I was a camp counselor in New York with New York City foster kids. And I just felt this huge pull to love on those who Hmm. need love. I mean, most everybody needs love, right? But I just felt this huge pull. Uh, And so psychology was the next step. I felt like, all right, I'm going to, this is the best way to serve people. And so I went to Wheaton, which is right outside Chicago and got my master's in clinical psychology uh, and got my first job back in Michigan at a local community mental health. And I was there for about five years. I worked, um, you know, I mean, I worked with families, adolescents, I led groups, uh, I went to the jail. I did a lot, a lot, a lot of Uh, work within that field and um, quite honestly ended up feeling burnt out (laughs) at the pay at the age of 24 they call it a quarter life crisis (laughs) yeah a midlife crisis at 24 well it's because you were pouring out right god kept putting you in i mean foster kids in inner city new york jails these are high demand places Mm -hmm. and so you needed some nourishment yeah, I did. I felt I felt burnt out and I was in this space where I was like, I don't know that I want to be here for thir- the next 30 years. Uh, I want to serve people and I know that's what I've been gifted in and, and called to, but mm. I didn't know that this specific job was where I should be. So yeah. I started searching. I started searching. My eyes were open and I mm. came across um, a direct selling business and have been with them for over 11 years. So I since have been able to pour into people in a, in a mm. different way, coach, mentor, create community and love others in, in, a, in a slightly different way, but still certainly using my gifts. Mm, wow. And so a direct selling company, which one? I am with It Works Global, and they started here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but now are in oh, really? Tampa, Florida area. Oh, wow. Started in Grand Rapids. I didn't know that, right? So what are some of the products that people would recognize as a part of It Works Global? 
Our signature product is a body wrap, tones, tightens, and firms the skin. It's like an at-home spa treatment. But then we have a whole line of plant-based supplements, a plant-based protein powder, mm. um, a facial line, that kind of thing. Mm. So God uh, took you from the field of clinical psychology in and of itself, but you still use, <laughs> right? Yeah. Which you learned in clinical psychology. And now you're, you're discovering scriptural principles that really fit in. And so you're working with a different group of people, helping them achieve freedom. Absolutely. I, I'm, I mean, I'm still teaching people time management, communication, getting outside their comfort zone, connecting with their strengths, utilizing them. A lot of the same things I did in my clinical psychology job. Right. I just get to work with a lot more people and I'm doing it myself because I had to break through my own glass ceiling time and time again, as I went up the ranks of the company and every time you do something that's what you're called to do I often like it it's not always easy um, <laughs> but I've learned so many things along the way it's been incredible what are some of the things you learned particularly in applying your faith to your work and getting action items checked off your list yeah so I think one of the ways my faith penetrates into what I currently do is that I do feel like I see people three steps ahead of where they see themselves. Hmm. So back when I was working with foster kids, I mean, you can imagine a lot of these children are just beaten down by life right, and right. they don't really see a way out. They're very hopeless often and don't really see their value and worth. And I'm coming in and I'm like, oh my gosh, you are worth so much more and you are loved. Yeah. And, you know, and so I cultivated this gift of being able to see the best in people and, and then speak to them with that language. And mm. what happens is I find that they rise to meet those expectations. And so I'm able to cast vision. I'm able to pour belief into my team and into uh, the people that I work with. And a lot of times it's the first time that they've had somebody speak life into them. And so mm. I've seen so much transformation um, just with creating and cultivating a team in that way. Mm. Speaking life into people, that reminds me of Ezekiel's experience with some dry bones, right? Mm -hmm. And God mm -hmm. just told him to, to speak some life into those and the sinews came on and then they, they got up and they marched. You, you really are setting the captives free, which was Jesus' ministry as he stood up and read from Isaiah the first time in, in the temple, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, what we say matters and, mm. you know, words have uh, emotion yes. and they create energy, right? And so wow. I feel like when I'm able to plant seeds of hope within my team by speaking that life, like calling out their strengths, mm. casting vision for them, it mm. seeps into them and then it impacts the way they start viewing themselves and even mm. viewing the world and even viewing God. And so we've seen so many people come to faith that may not have ever stepped into a church, but mm. feel loved and safe and their mm. guard is down. And all mm. of a sudden the Holy Spirit starts to move. Oh, and the, man, is that exciting? That's what you yeah, live it's for. It's so right? exciting. Oh my just, goodness. Just to see that happen. I love your phrase that you see people three steps ahead of where they are because that we do get trapped in these mental prisons, right? And, and we just stay there and we get captive. But you seeing people three steps ahead from ahead of where they are really says to me that you see them as God sees them. Absolutely. So often we buy the lie that other people speak into our lives, right? Particularly if you're in a foster family, for instance, and it may not be the most positive experience or our coworkers who, you know, maybe jealous or whatever, and they're just gossiping about us. So what is one of the mental pivot points that you've seen God do in people's lives for seeing themselves the way God sees them? Mm, you know, when I, I mean, it's, I think, God showed me that when I was a, a camp counselor, but okay. in my work with psychology, a depressed person would come in and just feel like so, uh, you know, so down and cloudy and gray. And because right. I had so much experience working with people in this situation, mm -hmm. I knew the other side. Yes. I had seen it so many times. And so I was able to say, borrow my confidence, borrow my confidence. <laughs> like I know that it seems 
tough now, but I've seen people move through it and I've seen Mm. them flourish. Mm -hmm. And so that experience time and time again, like I'm already over here seeing the success, seeing the, like seeing the victory, seeing Mm. God move throughout the situation, even seeing you use it for good. And so I am like able to just kind of take them on that journey because I already see the victory on the other side. Mm, so you're claiming it for them, absolutely, inspiring them to believe that God really can do this miracle in their lives and really absolutely. just taking them by the heart and leading them. And, and to have somebody say like, you, you, you may be here now, but you're not going to be here forever. Mm. And because I had so much belief and conviction, <laughs> they were, I mean, they did, they grabbed a hold of it and they said, okay, if she believes that so much, mm. I believe it too. And then they were able to start crawling forward. I mean, I say crawling because it wasn't a sure. sprint necessarily. It's still <laughs> no. hard work. It doesn't yeah. feel good, but we, we all have those seasons in life when we're in the mud, but I've seen so many people get to the other side, that I'm mm-hmm. just so excited about it that I really... Um, Mm -hmm. work to cast that vision speak that life to them yeah you're reminding me of david i think uh, it's the 69th psalm where he says something like save me oh lord i'm sinking in deep mire and Mm -hmm. and the whole imagery is is i'm up to my neck and man we all get there sometimes and it's at least in my life experiences in so many of faith positive nation it's those moments when you find out who you really are in God's eyes mm-hmm. and can really allow God to work that miracle. So you hit your bottom as our friends in, in the addiction uh, world say, we have to hit that bottom. And then Paul says, when I'm weak, I'm strong, right? Mm-hmm. So it's in those moments. So you're really conveying through your spirit, God's Holy Spirit to these people to encourage them to move forward. You know, I feel like, you know, you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit when I'll just be living my life and Uh talking to my team or whatever I'm doing. And people will often say, oh my gosh, I needed to hear that. Or, oh my, exactly. You know, I'm like, I just, thanks God. I just do my thing. (laughs) But I feel like part of what I really work to do is like you said in the beginning is have that quiet time every morning and to read and to journal and to just Mm -hmm. like, I feel like my job is to stay in alignment with the Holy spirit and the rest Mm -hmm. will flow. Absolutely. So what do you do to keep yourself in alignment? I do have a pretty strong morning routine. Um, Uh I exercise, I get up now that my children are older, I've got two little boys, ages seven and four. So Uh when they're babies, it's not as easy because sleep is golden, but they're they're so narcissistic when they're kids, right? (laughs) It's all about them. It is. I know. We're like, (laughs) what happened to my world? It's over for a while, but it's back now. And so I do, I get up before they do. I exercise. I listen to personal development while I'm exercising. And then I have a carved out half an hour, 6.30 to 7, where I am reading, journaling. Mm. I spend time being quiet and listening, which is a big piece of the puzzle. Mm. And just allowing, you know, just like settling, settling mm. my mind, settling my thoughts and connecting. And, and I really don't start my day until after I have been able to do that because I can tell a difference on the days that I skip it or I make breakfast instead or you know, mm-hmm. getting kids ready for school, mm-hmm. it impacts the rest of my day. I'm not quite as focused in the zone. My mind is a bit more chaotic. And so I really do try to carve out that time. Yeah. The negative world creeps in through mm-hmm. distractions and deceptions and things like that. And we're just more vulnerable if we mm-hmm. haven't had that personal time in the mornings. Um, I, I think it's addicting in a positive, healthy way. Mm-hmm. I, I really think about it as surrounding myself with the Holy Spirit so that, like you were saying earlier, I, I speak words and they convey some kind of meaning. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it is, but, you know, again, somebody really needed to hear that. So why would you, why would you go off into the world without that? Right. What, what right. keeps people from, if I know that I benefit from a morning quiet time? and getting my thoughts aligned with the Holy Spirit. So I have, I pray for the mind of Christ, for instance. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I know I do better and enjoy my life more and am more effective and give to others better, when I, when I do this, when I pray for the mind of Christ and sit still and listen, why do I not do that? Why is it so hard for us to, to I keep know. doing it? You know, I think a few things. I think that, like you said, deception, distractions creep in. And we have to guard it. 
We have mm-hmm. to guard our mind and guard our thoughts. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if we don't, then it's very easy to just let life come at us rather than taking mm-hmm. it by the reins. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we know what to do, but we don't take our con- control of our calendar. We don't take control of our time or of our thoughts. And so we just let life happen to us. Mm. Um, but I can tell you, if you decide just for like 21 days, right, right, to carve out, whether it's five minutes or 30 minutes or whether it's deep breathing in the car or, you know, like something <laughs> consistent, you'll, you'll feel a difference and it will motivate you to keep going. Absolutely. It's addicting because it, it really settles your mind in Christ. Paul calls it a peace, which passes all of our understanding. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's mm-hmm. such a cooler way to live than distracted and anxious and the sky is falling every single minute. Right. Yeah. And there's, you know, one of the cool things is I was, I was working my business and I was mm-hmm. do you know, in my zone and I felt like I was benefiting our team and I was doing my thing and I have the psychology background. So I knew that thoughts were important. Yeah. Um, but I learned throughout the last few years that it really, it's not just like fluffy psychology stuff. <laughs> you know, it's not like just a good thing to do, but it truly right. physically changes our brain. It like does. it impacts the neural pathways. Mm. It creates new, um, like your neurons fire differently, which it, it then actually impacts the way you view the world, because they call it your reticular activating system, mm-hmm. you know, the way you think it um, impacts the filtering system with your eyes and your mind. And so you view the world differently. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, if that is all triggered by this morning quiet time and, and <laughs> really captivating, you know, taking my thoughts captive and choosing what I want to focus on. And that right. trickles down and impacts everything about my day. Like everything. I have got to make it a priority. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And it makes you a better mom, a better wife mm-hmm. or spouse. It makes you a better neighbor, makes you a better worker all the way around in our faith positive um, coach training certification. We teach about the reticular activating oh, system. Cool the rash. Yeah. And we really liken that to a movie. So it's like you're, you're editing your own movie for that day. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so you just begin to see yourself doing these things The the cool outcome and huge benefit for so many of our coaching clients is that they experience less stress because their free prefrontal cortex is not uh, washed out in cortisol, which is your body's right. reaction to stress. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. it, it's trying to, you know, danger, danger, you know, be careful. Well, geez, everything can't be danger. So again, the peace, which passes all understanding that comes to you from the mind of Christ, you really can, even when the world's chaotic, have a peaceful, easy feeling. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. the Eagles. Okay. Uh, that peaceful, easy feeling. So what are some of the challenges you've referred to your team several times? What are some of the challenges that you see your team members uh, really experiencing in some places where you've seen some dramatic results in helping them? Absolutely. So I find that there are two modes of thinking, right? We have fear-based thoughts and we have faith-based thoughts. Mm -hmm. And you can say you want something with your mind. Like you can say like, Like I want this goal or I want to get out of debt or I want, Mm -hmm. you know, et cetera. Right. But if your heart and your thoughts are still in that anxiety, that fear based, that negative thinking, um, it's never going to happen. And you don't quite even believe that it will happen for you. You can say whatever you want, but like internally your body is, is radiating like it's not going to happen. And so I find that a lot of like we really know what they want, but then we have to internalize it and connect it from our head to our heart and then create those new thoughts, those faith-based thoughts, because we have a mm-hmm. choice in every situation, faith or fear. Right. And the faith or the fear thoughts don't necessarily go away completely because we are in take our thoughts captive and mm-hmm. choose to focus on the faith-based thoughts, mm-hmm. meaning I mean, I've had situations when my outside life seemed easy, but I claimed victory Hmm. and and I claimed that my family would be whole and I claimed Hmm. all of these things. I just, I kind of became a professional ignorer. (laughs) Like they may be there, but I give them no attention and I'm so focused on what I want. So I really teach our team that too, because I find that they can say they want something, but they're yet still living in this fear-based emotion. Mm-hmm. And so we want to really build the faith 
build um, the new thought patterns and help them to see that they truly can become all that God created them to be. Mm -hmm. And they have the choice each and every day to decide which thought process, like pattern they want to live in. Yeah. What are you going to feed in your mind? Because the fear never goes away. I mean, Jesus told us in this life, you're going to have a whole lot of trouble. Right. So you you just expect the troubles to come, but it's, it's fear not because as John says, perfect love casts out fear. Um, But also it's like, I love that professional ignorer phrase. It's like, you can say, okay, I'm fearful, but courage is the ability to act even while you're afraid. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and act as if God's word might be true. Mm -hmm. And and, and as if God really does have a plan for me, it's a future and a hope and I'm going to prosper. Let me go ahead and act like that. Despite the fact that I'm afraid of what, what, um, what could happen and just see what happens and watch God do a miracle. Right. And I find so many people and I was this way too. I mean, I think we all learn Uh, we can see this fear pop up and it's easy to say, oh, well, that must be a sign. I'm not supposed to do it. (laughs) <laughs> or that must be, and, yeah, right. and what I've learned is it is not a, it is just like part of life. And so yep. I don't take it seriously anymore. Mm-mm. And I, I, like, I spend that time really identifying what does God want me to do? Like, what are the natural strengths I have? What are the mm. exciting things that are bubbling up in my, and they're still, you're there. But because I'm so excited about it and confident that that's where the Lord is guiding me, that I just like, don't, you know, I don't take it as a sign anymore. I take it as just a piece of the puzzle and I move on. And it's going to happen. There's nothing personal Mm -hmm. about it. You just expect adversity. Then you engage it so that you say, what can I learn from this? What can I do differently next time? And then you endure it, right? You just keep going in spite of the fact that it seems like everything's crashing around you. You trust Mm -hmm. God and you move forward because let's face it, the, the liar, the deceiver, right? He wants to hold mm-hmm. us back from being all that God created us to be. So we focus on the positive that God's doing as opposed to caving into the negative world, right? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So uh, obviously you read scripture and you listen. I'm thinking uh, every morning. So I'm thinking Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. It's one of those favorites. How do you mm-hmm. still your mind? I mean, you can you can kind of crowd it out. Hopefully the seven and four year old are still asleep, right? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So, okay, you keep them in the bed, duct tape them in the bed, whatever. That was a joke. <laughs> mean that. Uh, but, but how do you still your mind? Because I think that's the ultimate playground, if you will, for, mm-hmm. for chaos and noise. Mm-hmm. How do you still your mind in the mornings to listen to what God wants to say to you, Denise? I do. I have an app. It's called Headspace. And so it's, a, and it's not really a guided meditation. You're done. Uh, and I deep, do the deep breathing. And then the thoughts, they do come. I mean, I'm not going to like be thoughtless, but I just don't right. spend time on them. So I really just try to slow my thoughts down. Mm. It's kind of going from the crazy beta waves to like just throwing, like um, just slowing my thoughts down. So then I can hear what's bubbling up inside. Mm. So quiet. Um, and sometimes music is helpful, especially if my boys are in the kitchen because uh, they're doing their own thing. And so I'll have music in my ears and just kind of close my eyes and, and settle in and listen. Mm-hmm. And that's for about 10 minutes. And then I start journaling after that. And I find that after, and that's when I journal and read mm. is once I've kind of settled in, then my mind is in the right space and I feel like I hear a lot better. So, mm. oh, it's relaxing. Just thinking about it. <laughs> just talking about it makes me feel better, right? <laughs> Releasing some ter- serotonin and dopamines in your brain. You feel yep. better already, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it is a beautiful thing to be able to focus on the mind of Christ and to know that you're not in this world alone that you really can increase your faith, that you can have greater joy at work, right? And that Mm -hmm. you can love God and others more, even those people who may be kind of difficult to love at work, right? Mm -hmm. Denise, somebody in Faith Positive Nation is going to want to reach out to you, and somebody's going to want to know your favorite Bible verse. So have you got a favorite Bible verse or passage you can share with us? I have a life verse. This is something that stuck with me when I was a child, and it's because of the hymn, um, Here I Am, Lord. Mm. I grew up in a Methodist church and knew all of the hymns, right? And so Uh 
Isaiah 6, 8 uh, says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And I feel like even as a high schooler, I was like, I'm here, send me. I want to do it. Like, I'm all in. Like, tell me what you want to do. You know, I, I just felt like I was always like, Here I am. Uh, I'm in. ready. I'm showing up 100%. I'm all in. And so that's, I, I've kind of adopted that as my life verse, uh-huh. uh, saying yes to the next step, even if it scares me. Yeah. At going to camp was scary. Uh, I went, I just recently to well, elite training coach thing and I, I sign up and then I go, Oh crap, what did I just do? <laughs> and I think that's really? just like the door opening and I say yes. And I walk through and I go, Oh dear, that's scary. But doing yeah. it by myself or whatever the case may be, I've just always said yes to the next thing, mm-hmm. even if there was a bit of fear. But then every single year I choose a word and a verse to go along with that word. And this year my word is greater. So I have it like on my it's called wallpaper. Yeah. Um, I have it on my house. And the verse that uh-huh. connects with that is John 14, 12. And it says, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am mm. going to the father. Mm. And To me, that just speaks to the fact that the Holy Spirit is alive and well today and that miracles are happening all around us. And I want my eyes and my ears to be open to all of the miracles that are happening each and every day. And so greater things than these is what I'm calling into my life. (laughs) <laughs> oh, sweet. Well, Denise Walsh, you are one of those greater things. And I know you're a huge blessing to so many people. And now you're a huge blessing to Faith Positive Nation, which is absolutely awesome. How can people get in touch with you? Thank you so much for that. And you can go to denisewalsh.com. I recently wrote a workbook. That's the psychologist in me. (laughs) We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to do it right now. Absolutely. (laughs) And it combines science and scripture because what I'm learning is science is confirming what scripture has always taught us. And through my whole, my own story, I've seen it over and over and over again, not just with myself, but with people all around me. And so it takes people on a journey of really identifying what is it that I want? What are my natural um, strengths? Trusting my gut, growing my intuition, Mm -hmm. growing my listening ears um, Mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit, you know, identifying your seven areas of life and like what a dream day would look like and then how to implement that into your life. And so I say we can have... Uh, dream 10. So on a scale of one to 10, right? All seven areas can be a 10 at the same time. And I truly believe that we can thrive in all areas. And so it's called the dream life workbook. And if you go to denisewalsh.com, it will be coming out and you'll be uh, get an early bird, like discount code sent to you when you uh, join the email list. We'll bless that list as soon as it's available. And I am so excited because we do webinars. We, uh, to read is really, really exciting. Oh, sweet. Thank you. So that's denisewalsh.com. And that's in your episode copy right here on our website at getpositive.today. And also it's on YouTube and all the other iTunes, the amazing places that we have the opportunity to share Faith Positive Radio. So it's denisewalsh.com. Make sure you get there and get your copy of The Dream Life so that you can redefine your reality and achieve your dreams. Denise, thank you so much. We appreciate your wisdom today, the time, the passion that you bring to the pursuits that God places before you. And we just pray God's blessings on you, those two incredible little boys of yours, (laughs) and your entire family, all that you touch. May God bless you and, and just enrich your mind and heart in ways that only he can. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.